just as something and then you can all uh, pose your questions as well. Um, yes, sir, probably a very serious question. Um, the process of falling in love and finding love is something that uh, everyone goes through and, uh, and then where you can't forget to, uh, to honor yourself and protect yourself regardless of any gender and orientation. Um, and perhaps even more when you when your gender is not the most conventional one, the traditional one. Um, this, this, the, this, the title comes from that for something that breaks for Sebastian's character. Actually, I think it's I think it's Andreas who breaks. I think Sebastian Ellie is quite, even though maybe. Sebastian Ellie doesn't really know how to be in this world. I think it's... I think it's... Uh, she has some... She, she doesn't know where she wants, but I think she's on the way up to the hill, all the film. So, and Andreas thinks he's he thinks he's this tall uh, rebel that knows everything, but then Ellie sucks out his light and Ellie comes out. Yeah. So, and I think falling in love, I, I, I think it was really important to make a love film that I believed in, and I think. I really wanted to have all the kind of the scary thing about falling in love to kind of don't know who you are within your own body and I think that's I think a lot of people go through that. Um, so yes. Um and is definitely found the uh an extra was, uh, that could capture that very well and, uh, and portray that uh, feeling of being afraid of falling in love. Um, and she looks amazing. Right? Also, uh, as a boy and as a girl, um, both of them. How did you find, uh, maybe for Siri, she's, she's the casting the person uh, responsible for the casting. Um, how did you find this, uh, this actual? and uh, how did it work? I found, we found Saga um, through, we had advertisements in different queer intimate communities and uh, I was asked to do the casting because I'm also part of like the queer club scene and I uh, also act so I didn't have any casting experience before this and yeah, so MS Martin also wanted amateurs for the parts, and then at the end, so Saga actually emailed us after we had uh, put up an ad on one of the biggest Swedish queer sites, and she told us that she had read the book and instantly felt that she was Sebastian, which, so we took her in for casting, and uh, she did an amazing first casting, and then we tried her with Iggy, the guy that plays Andreas, and it was a very good match also because him being an educated actor, so it was felt very safe to have one experienced one and then Saga, but I think... But you weren't sure? I wasn't sure when I got the email at first, I, wasn't, I was kind of skeptical, because she was too into the... yeah. But then, yeah, we took her into casting. So that's how we found her. We, we tried a lot of young androgynous guys and girls and, and uh, neithers. Yeah. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know, who doesn't know, uh, um, the film is based on a novel, which is a very long name. I always have to say the name of the novel since I can't remember it. You are the roots that sleeps beneath my feet and feet and holds the world in place. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think it's, and it's a bright eyes quote. And I think, yeah. Okay.
alguém que tenha uma questão para esta ou para a Siri? Is there is anyone who has a question? Yes, over there. Wait, 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 can you wait for the mic, please? <laughs> Do you reckon it's easier to find love when it's like not socially acceptable? When it's like when when other people look at it and it seems like crude and rude and ugly. If when you're living, do you think it's it has more meaning and it's more fulfilling than what we usually get? No? What was the question? It's like, <laughs> do you think that? Because when other people look at the kind of love that you live in, yeah. if it looks, do you, do you think that it's it's more important that it has more meaning for you because it's different from what's around you? Do you think it makes it better, or is it just the I, same? I think those two characters are really uh, two romantic people. I think they have a lots of dreams and projections and with, with together they really dream together. I think, I think love maybe is harsher for a romantic person. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. Yeah, it, it's hard to be a romantic in this cold world. Don't you think? Well, I don't know. But what I, what, I, what I mean is like when, when, when you, for instance, uh, Andrews, it was, it, was, it was hard for him to accept this new reality, yeah? And my point is, when, when you're trying to achieve something that you're not really sure if that's what you want, and it's not like sociably it's acceptable, when you reach it, does it have more meaning than the usual kind of relationship? Do you, what, do you mean like a cis straight relationship or what? It, 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 it doesn't matter that you're straight or not. What it matters no. is if, if the people around you don't accept it when you yeah. achieve it, does it have more meaning than your usual relationships? Yeah. I'm asking because I don't know. Yes, it does. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Oh. oh, you have more there? No, you have one there at least. Sorry, it's your word. It's your word. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Um, so I would like to ask, what challenges did you face um, about making a movie where you have a trans uh, main character? Um, the challenges in producing it and selling it and even inside the queer LGBT scene with other directors because sometimes people are very pro-gay but even a lot of trans, very transphobic. So what challenges did you face? If oh, any? lots of challenges. But it, it was quite often that people were like, isn't Andreas really the main character in this film? Isn't it that, it's, wouldn't it be much more interesting for the audience if it was like, this normal guy that meets this mystical trans person that kind of changes his own life. Isn't that a good film? I don't know, yeah, oh, maybe we, yeah, no, I uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> because it, it, I think the fi film world is so square, I think, and it's so based on really much uh, simplifying ideas about human, not just trans people, but people in general. It's kind of, it's, it's, it, I think it's always a struggle to kind of uh, try to pull back the stories and the experience from, from being a human at all sometimes in films, because it's kind of, at least in Scandinavia, I think it's like, the dominating ideas about cinema is to make people more as a function to tell a story rather than to really get close to 
lives and to the characters. And I'm, I think I'm more interested in the characters than actually maybe the story, because I want to get close to people and to kind of explore stuff and to visualize feelings and stuff. So yeah, it was a, it was a struggle in many ways. And I think it, it took a lot more work, this film, than it had to do, because it's also my first fiction, so uh, even though I tried to explain, people didn't really know what they were expecting. But now I'm so happy for the film, it's so fucking good. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you have a nice struggle? So just, did, you, did the cost?
if anyone wants to ask anything, it has to be a really short question, and uh, it has to be now. Okay, that's it. We have to close. We have a screening uh, afterwards at midnight. Thanks so much for coming. The film uh, screens again tomorrow if you want to come and make more questions, both to Esther and City. It's in the afternoon tomorrow. Thanks so much for coming again. See you.